art nerds. Today we're taking a look at the M. Graham's five color watercolor set. This is sort of their introductory color set with their basic primary. So if you wanna see how these handle, you're just gonna have to keep watching. So these arrived today straight from Amazon. I have a little bit of experience with M. Graham in the past, like their titanium white here. I've gotten them in art snacks before. And uh, when I try to put them in my palette, I usually find that they don't quite work for me because they're very viscous. Um, but yet still liquidy, they never really fully harden. Now that's considered a selling point for these. Um, they do make a lot of promises though. They promise that your paintings are gonna look better with M. Graham color. And uh, I'm not the sort of woman you make these sort of promises in front of because I'm gonna hold you to it. So not only are we going to be taking a look at these, we're gonna be taking a look at a Daniel Smith Essential Six lineup. We're going to be taking a look at core watercolors. We're going to be taking a look at white knights. We're going to be taking a look at Sennelier. We're going to be taking a look at Holbein. And we're going to be taking a look at Magello. We're basically going to be looking at all of the quality watercolors or almost all of the quality watercolors I have acquired and swatched since starting this journey. So I am really excited to share it with you guys. Now I do realize that um, a lot of what I just showed you guys, those are gonna be in half pans. So um, I also have two versions of a lot of those. So I'm gonna try to dig those up if I feel like the difference is gonna be significant. But let's go ahead and take a look at these M. Graham watercolors. So these were purchased off of Amazon and it is the five color set. Inside is azo yellow, permanent alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, sap green, and burnt sienna. So it seems like a really nice lineup of colors. I do have, like I said, some other M. Graham watercolors. I'm gonna dig those up and um, hopefully include them in this review in some capacity. But for right now, let's just take a look at the five we've got in front of us. Now, they're already shrink wrapped. The presenta presentation is pretty nice. Although I have to say, Sennelier's five color test pack has really, really nice presentation. Um, it comes in a metal box, whereas this comes in a small cardboard box. So the difference with these is they're made with honey. They claim this gives richer color and prevents hardening, but hardening is something I actually utilize because I work with a lot of my watercolors in half pans like this. So hardening is a trait that I typically look for. So M. Graham was founded 25 years ago by oil painters who were interested in sort of Renaissance style painting and the Renaissance masters. Their watercolors utilize honey. Honey is a natural humectant and it's hydrophilic, so it absorbs water from the atmosphere. This means that theoretically these should reactivate very quickly, they should stay moist, and they should provide even fluid washes and stronger, truer colors. And this is something that the M. Graham site really pushes is that their colors are stronger and truer when you do 50, like, um, even ratios with other brands out on the market because of this honey and because of the pigments they use. M. Graham makes oil paints, gouache, and watercolor, as well as the mediums for these. And there's 70 total colors of watercolor available. They come in 15 milliliter tubes or about half an ounce. And they are available open stock and in themed five color sets, including the basic set, which we're looking at here, cobalt mix, quinacridone quintet, landscape, Jewel Tone, Cityscape, Summer, Desert, Southwest, Marinescape, New England, Pacific Southwest, and the South. And Amazon has more of these theme sets than Blick does. Blick's only got a couple. It's available on Amazon, Blick, and through Cheap Joe's. I'm sure you can find it elsewhere, but those are the places I found quickly online. It's also available in a 10 color set. And the basic five color set was $36.84 on Amazon. And these usually start at around $8 and go up from there depending on the pigments inside. For today's review, I also have Terra Rosa, I have Burnt Umber, and then I have a tube of their gouache. And I believe all four of these 
have been sent to me in various art boxes over the years, probably art snacks. So I've never really used them too much because I like to work with tan watercolors typically. And I found that at the time they didn't really work too well in pans. So um, I've kind of shelved them for a while. I knew they were quality watercolor, but they didn't necessarily have a place in my studio. I think now they might. So they have pretty simple screw top lids. Wanted to come off very easily. And for today's review, we're going to be swatching on Blick Premier Cold Press Watercolor Paper. This is cotton rag watercolor paper. I've recently started using it. Um, we're working on the 140 pound cotton rag paper and actually has a thumbnail of an illustration I wanted to do on it, but this will be a fine start for this pad. And I find it to be somewhat comparable to arches. I really like painting on it actually. I, I actually downright wanna say it reminds me of painting on arches, but um, I don't have necessarily the same watercolor needs that many of you need, do. So I hate to say, oh, it's just like painting on arches when those of you who are more familiar with arches might not find it suitable. But this is what we're gonna be swatching on today. Fine feathers for fine birds. We're gonna use a nice watercolor paper to test out our nice watercolors. So we're gonna start by doing from the tube swatches. I have here a pigment brush pen. And we're gonna test for opacity. We're gonna start with the basic five color set and then I will swatch my additional colors. And I know I have a purple floating around somewhere. I have no idea where that is though. So we're going to begin by doing a dot. Oh, these are very liquid. A dot of watercolor at the top of the page. This is something I probably could not send a dot sample to my art friends to figure something else out and they seem a lot looser than other tube watercolors. Sometimes the tube watercolors I swatch feel a little dehydrated and you may have noticed that from some of my videos where I'm filling a half pan. It's more like baby poo texture than anything else. And I opted for the basic colors because I've been reviewing so many watercolor sets for you guys lately. It's nice to have kind of a base comparison. And it's also always interesting to me to see what different companies think of as like the basics, what you absolutely need to paint. And it varies by company to company. I don't know if that's like, you know, so they can offer their house blend or what. So we have Azo Yellow. Permanent Alizarin Crimson, Ultramarine Blue, and it's a very blue, blue, Sap Green, Burnt Sienna. That's the basic set. Now we have Titanium White Opaque. Then Terra Rosa. Burnt Umber. And we're gonna end with the gouache. And I'm not much of a gouache painter. I don't use it too frequently in my studio. So raw sienna. I'm gonna use a Sumi brush for this test. Color is really nice, strong, quite vibrant. They might not be kidding about vibrancy and pigment load. And I don't think my camera is at all able to do it justice, which is really a shame. All right, so that's the basic five set. That's a pretty decent white. I usually don't have much use for watercolor whites and I just use gouache, but that actually has some coverage. All right, my Terra Rosa has separated a little bit. So I can't get a good swatch of that really. The burnt umber is really nice. And then finally, our gouache, raw sienna. And that actually has, so one of the reasons I don't care for gouache is it tends to not be nearly as luminous as watercolor. It tends to feel kind of dead and flat, but this 
feels like it's got a lot more color depth than some of the other gouaches I've used. So I am going to let this dry and I'm going to use this for my later testing when I put these in half pans and see how they reconstitute. So I'll put this aside for now. So this is our lineup for tube testing, Holbein Mission Gold, our M Grams, Sennelier, Daniel Smith, and this is the three color pack, core watercolors, and then because these are not available in um, any other form, I'm going to use the half pans for the white nights. And I'm going to try and pick colors that reflect the colors in this basic palette, other than with this, which is Perline Red, Hansi Yellow Medium, and French Ultramarine. So for this part of the test, we have our M Grams, we have our St. Petersburg White Knights, and I'm only going to be testing five of the included 12 colors. We have our Sennelier, we have our core watercolors, we have Daniel Smith, we have Holbein, and we have Mission Gold. And it's not always a one-to-one -one comparison. Often I just selected the color from the set that best seemed to match what was in this set. The exception is Sennelier. It's a five color set that I got the test set so that it is what it is. Um, so the colors we're gonna be looking at from each brand are, for M. Graham, Azo Yellow, Permanent, Alizarin Crimson, Ultramarine Blue, Sap Green, and Burnt Sienna. From St. Petersburg, I don't think these have the names on them, so I'll just point this, 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 probably this because Sap Green tends to be a cooler yellow, and then probably this here. For Sennelier, Lemon Yellow, Bright Red, Ultramarine Deep, Chinese Orange, Payne's Gray. For Core, Permanent Gamboge, Quinn Crimson, Cobalt Blue Chromium, or Chromium Cobalt Blue, or Cerulean Blue, my mistake, I'm sorry. Phthalo Green Blue Shade, and Burnt Umber Natural. For Daniel Smith, we're looking at these three tubes here, Pyroline Red, Hansa Yellow Medium, and French Ultramarine. For Holbein, we're looking at permanent uh, lemon yellow, rose matter, cobalt blue hue, permanent green number one, burnt umber. And then for Mission Gold, we're looking at lemon yellow, rose matter, deep ultramarine, sap green, and burnt sienna. We're going to complete this portion of the test on Fluid 100 watercolor paper. This is also a cotton rag watercolor paper with a cold press finish. It just has a little bit less tooth than the Blick and it's still block bound. And I think the way I'm going to do this is I am going to pick one color from each family and do them comparatively. Now, since these are not direct comparison colors, they're not all the same color name, they're not all the same color uh, pigments, um, we're really just kind of looking at transparency, luminosity, vibrance, that sort of thing. We're looking in a general sense because with the way this is going right now, there's no way we could do a direct comparison. We would literally have to buy the exact same pigments and then compare those. So um, that's not really feasible for me and how I do my studio. So we're going to do it this way. And hopefully it's still helpful. I really just want to see if their colors really are more vibrant, more luminous, more transparent, more everything in the world that they promise. So um, hopefully this will be enough of a test. I have a sheet of paper here with five lines on it. Each line is going to represent a color that we're going to test. And I'm going to test all of a family so that it stays consistent. So we're gonna begin with M. Graham since this is the M. Graham review. And I'm gonna start by applying a dot of paint and then swatching it out. And I apologize, you can see a little bit of my phone in the shot. I like to do sneak 
previews on my Instagram for upcoming videos. So if you follow Instagram.com slash NatoSoup, at NatoSoup, obviously, um, you guys can get sneak peeks at what I'm working on here in the studio. So, wow, I goofed this already. That's okay. I was going to do all the yellows on a line. I'll just do all the yellows going. Nope, can't do it that way. Wow. This is what happens when you get so distracted with Instagram fame that you don't pay attention to what you're actually doing. Okay, that's totally cool. I will pause this, remove this, and we're going to start fresh. All right, friends, let's do this right. So for this version, I did a smaller middle of the line, line for opacity testing. That's the only real difference we've got here though. And uh, let's do it right this time. Okay, so we're starting with M gram, azo yellow, very nice color saturation, just kind of a nice color in general. Now, hopefully, without getting into the yellow, we can test out our permanent alizarin crimson, which is a cool red. I find it makes a really lovely pink, actually. Next is ultramarine blue. Then sap green, which just wants to get all over the place. That's gonna be my big complaint for these is that every time I uncap them, they're so liquidy that they get all over my hands. So sap green. And then finally, burnt sienna. And while wet, these M gram colors are just beautiful. So again, from the top, azo yellow, permanent alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, sap green, and burnt sienna for our M gram watercolors. Next, we're going to swatch the Sennelier watercolors. Since it is not a one-to-one -one comparison, I'm going to use the paints gray. Actually, I should probably do these all the way at the end of the line. That would be smart because we don't have a green and we don't have a true brown. We have Chinese orange. So I guess I'll bookend our swatches over here. And these were sent to me by my friend Kabocha. Thank you so much, Kabocha. And I have already reviewed these and done a field test. So if you're interested in what I think of Sennelier watercolors, I hope you will check that post out, or rather that video out. And something I really liked about Sennelier is that the colors are very vibrant for these watercolors as well. I also found that they dry quite nicely in half pans in case you want to be able to take them on the go and you don't want still wet tube paints or you don't want to bring your tubes with you. And straight from the tubes, these reactivate quite well. But I have to be honest, I find the true test is when the watercolors have actually had time to dry. How vibrant will the colors remain even after the water has evaporated? It's one of the reasons why I'm doing these tests on cotton rag paper is that I find that I have the best experience with color vibrancy when I'm working on cotton rag paper. I'm gonna make sure I get enough of the color in there that you guys can actually see what's going on. These are Sinelli R our Sennelier watercolors, lemon yellow, bright red, ultramarine deep, Payne's gray, and Chinese orange. And I can already see that some of the vibrancy is lost with the bright red as it dries. I'd like to mention also that Sennelier is also a honey-based watercolor. Next up on our testing list, we're going to do the St. Petersburg White Nights 
and these are Russian watercolors. And you guys are probably wondering why I'm not doing Winsor & Newton. And that's because I primarily work from Winsor & Newton using pre-dried half pans rather than tube paints. Although I'm currently swatching half pans. I don't know. Maybe because my Winsor & Newton see the most use because they're in my everyday palette. And uh, they're looking pretty raunchy right now. And I did not pre-activate these pans, by the way. I probably should have. It's like my head has detached itself from my body. But they are activating really quickly with that in mind. So this is the Yarka St. Petersburg watercolors. Next, we're going to do the core watercolors. And like I said earlier, we don't really have a 100% one-to-one correlation. This is a set I assembled kind of piecemeal based on what I needed and what colors I wanted to try. So it's not, you know, 100% one-to-one, but hopefully we'll be able to tell if there's good vibrancy. Now, core is interesting in that they use Aquazole rather than gum Arabic. Aquazole is a clear binder, so it isn't yellow like gum Arabic and uh, it isn't golden like honey. So these will be interesting. Core really touts that it's blues are where it's at. They're true blues. There's no yellow to change the color. In fact, I wish I had a uh, a good ultramarine. I need to pick up a good ultramarine, I guess. I thought I had one. The colors used in this swatch, the core colors used in this swatch, are permanent gamboge, quinacridone crimson, cerulean blue chromium, phthalo green blue shade and burnt umber natural and i think burnt umber is the only like direct but i mean you know different companies use different pigments and use different names so all right next we're going to take a look at I'm trying to decide whether i want to do the daniel smiths next or if I want to switch over and do some Asian watercolors with the Magello and the Holbein. I think I'm going to do the Korean watercolors. Now, I have reviewed Magello Mission Gold here on this channel, and I really like them. The colors are really vibrant, uh, really beautiful, and um, they're you know, fairly inexpensive. They're very accessible. They do come in smaller tubes, but I think that's great if you're kind of figuring out what brands work for you, what colors you like, that sort of thing. So I have a review and a field test. I want to do another field test that will better demonstrate how great these are. Um, so I highly recommend you guys check those out. And Magello Mission Gold also does single pigment watercolors, which um, I bought the 24 color set, so I didn't specifically go for that. And Amazon is hot and cold on how good the prices are. Sometimes the prices are phenomenal. So I would recommend just kind of keeping an eye on Camel Camel, which is kind of a price comparison site. You can set it up to keep an eye on when prices will drop. Um, I recommend you keep an eye out if you want to pick up some Mission Gold. So these are the colors from Mission Gold, Lemon Yellow, Rose Matter, Ultramarine Deep, Sap Green, and Burnt Sienna. I should point out that M. Graham does have this sort of testing on their site, or rather the way they do it is they do like a 50-50 tinting mix with white and with the colors, and then they have an unlisted brand that's like Brand X or something. I understand for legal reasons why companies do that, but as an art supply purchaser, an art supply reviewer, I wish they would just say which brands they're reviewing because it can make a really big difference and that can be kind of deceptive if you're not saying what brand you're using. So next we're going to take a look at the Holbein Artist watercolors. 
You can also get these on Amazon. You can get them through Dick Blick. You can get them, I believe, through Rambutan. And um, you can get them in Japan, which is where I ended up picking up a bunch of other colors. I reviewed the 18 color set for you guys here on the channel and did a field test. So if you're interested in these watercolors, I highly recommend you check those out. So the colors used for Holbein were permanent yellow lemon, rose matter, cobalt blue hue, permanent green number one, and burnt umber. Finally, we have the Daniel Smith Trio with spiruline red, pansy yellow medium, and French ultimate. And the reason I'm going with this trio rather than the six color essential set is that my six color essential set tubes have walked. They are somewhere, who knows where. So I'm gonna save that for the half pan comparison. And we're just gonna focus on swatching these three colors. A lot of artists, myself included, really enjoy Daniel Smith watercolors. They can be a little bit pricey. Um, I haven't reviewed them quite as much as I would like, but they really deliver excellent color. In fact, my friend Kabocha, who I mentioned earlier, she's the one who sent me the Sennelier watercolor. She sent me the Essential Six Color Set, and you guys can check out that review, unbox and swatch slash field test um, as well. <laughs> but this year at my local plaza during their hands-on creativity, I had the pleasure of seeing a workshop put on by the current owner of Daniel Smith Watercolors. So that's our final three. Hansa Yellow Medium, French Ultramarine, and finally, Pyroline Red, which I'll just right in the middle there. So we're going to give this test a chance to dry. And while it dries, we're going to set up our M gram dry palette. For this portion of the project, you're going to need half pans. And I got mine off of Amazon. You can buy like a pack of 100 half pans. We're only going to need five. I also have an Altoids tin. It's honestly cheaper to just buy Altoids than it is to buy empty pocket palettes, but you can buy an empty pocket palette if you like. In fact, this is my Sennelier tin. And what's neat about this is that I glued magnets to the bottom so I can rearrange this. It's very handy, but maybe don't have it near your magnetics or electronics. For this one though, we're just gonna tape them in. So we've got plenty of space to play around with. Actually, <laughs> following a trend of homemade palettes, this was made from um, a medicine container from like Target. And I put in a water brush and a little bit of sponge to clean it off. And I'm working on this tiny, super cute Nordstrom mint tin because I want to make like a wristwatch style palette for plain air painting. So always interested in how I can bring my paints with me. Now, actually, I can, speaking of bringing my paints with me, I have lots and lots of room in this Altoids tin. I wish I could find that purple, because that would be really handy, but I can bring all of my other colors with me. So I'm gonna grab four more half pans. And I think we can get away with five across the top. Maybe, we'll see. Let's, let's experiment first. And you can use half whole pans if you prefer, or um, any sort of combination that you can get to fit in your box. Okay, so that is not gonna fit perfectly. Maybe I can do... See, it's not, I've got nine. So it's never gonna work 
as well as I have in mind unless I find that purple. So what I might do is I might um, just leave room for the purple like this. But see, if we leave this space, you can put in a mini water brush or a bit of uh, paper towel or a cut down traditional brush, you know, whatever works for you and for your needs. But I think this is the way we're gonna do it. And I'm gonna do, hmm, I know, thinking, thinking. We're gonna do the two opaques in the middle. And I'll leave, did I? Five and four is nine. Take this and I'm gonna put that on the bottom row. I don't know where I'm gonna put the purple that I don't even know if I still have anymore. Burnt Sienna. Now let's start with Terra Rosa, then do Burnt Sienna, then do Burnt Umber. Sorry. I know watching an artist configure their palette is not the most interesting thing. So the next step is to fill these. And I'm really eager to see how they dry. I don't really care about cracking or crazing. Um, my watercolors are for use, they're not for show. So that's not something that really concerns me unless they fall out of the palettes and then I care. So I need them to adhere well enough that they're gonna stick to the palette. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill these and then I'm gonna let them dry for several days. So there's gonna be a little bit of a time skip. And then we're gonna re-swatch everything from a half pan perspective, which I don't know, I, ooh, goopy. I think that's really interesting. I hope you guys are in it to win it, in it for the long haul. Hopefully this isn't just a huge waste of, because it won't work. Hopefully it'll work. And I'm gonna use washi tape to stick them in. You can use double stick tape. I actually had double stick tape, but I'm gonna use washi tape. You can use masking, other types of masking tape. You can use magnets. I've shown you guys how to do that. You can really, oh, this is gonna be super messy. You can really use whatever works for you. I like using washi tape because it's lower tack. So I can reposition my pans if I need to. Magnets are also good for that, but that requires glue and magnets and patience. And sometimes you just don't have those materials. Whereas washi tape requires washi tape. Maybe even no patience at all. You can spray paint the lid if you want to. Um, I found that the paint I use stained, so I'm just gonna leave it as is and mix colors like that. And you would spray paint it so that um, you can get a white surface so that you can kind of better judge your color mixes. But like I said, I find that it's stained. So if you have a white spray paint that doesn't stain that you recommend, probably something with high gloss would be good or maybe something with a lot of sealer. I would love to hear from you. Okay, that's row number one. And it's probably a little too uptight against the lid. That's probably gonna bite me in the butt later. Then we're gonna do, I think actually it's gonna be easier to get in there with the bottom row. And I'm gonna leave purple at the front. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tape it in there as a space holder. And these are Meaden half pans. You can also get half pans from like Dick Blick. You can get them from Jerry's Artorama. They're super cheap. I paid like $15 for a hundred because I find myself doing these, these videos pretty often. And it's honestly at this point way cheaper just to invest in a Sure, why don't we do it this way? Invest in a bunch of the half pans and then just buy Altoids tins or other types of mints. 
Oh, yeah. My Terra Rosa. Ooh, that's such regrets. Is that honey? Is that... Um, it looks like gum arabic. I want to clean it out, too, because I don't want a half pamphlet of gum arabic. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to replace it for now. Because life is short. And uh, if you have just like random half pans floating around your life, let's see if I can get the all floated to the top. I wonder how that's going to affect the paint quality. Man, it's no wonder I couldn't get a good swatch. It seems like it's separated. But if you've got like random half pans floating around, you can pop them in a tin like this. It's like two less than $2 and you get the mints. And this is like the oldest trick in the book. So I don't think I'm showing you guys anything new. I just want you guys to notice. See, this is what I mean where some of them come out like baby poop. I'm more used to that. It's also an older tube though. Or is it? That was burnt sienna. That's a new tube. Another poopy one. It's okay. I've had some really, like my core watercolors, when I filled those half pans, they were really liquidy and I got them all over the place and they dry just fine. So kind of excited to see how these dry. The Sennelier's also dried well. So, and those are honey based. So I have high hopes, although I've had bad experiences in the past. And I know that's gouache. And then I don't normally mess around with white watercolors. Um, that was why I didn't do that tinting test. I usually just leave the page white and uh, paint my pastels by not painting full saturation. I know, shocking. Real innovative stuff there. That's another reason why I didn't do the test the way uh, M. Graham did, even if that might be an actual better way to tell whether or not These watercolors are as full tinting strength as they promise. Okay, so that is that. That's our cute little M. Graham half pan Altoids tin surprise. I'm going to let these dry for several days. I say dry, but they're honey based. Will they ever dry? Well, the Sennelier's did. And it's raining right now, so these might even like swell twice their size. We'll find out. It's going to be an adventure. It'll be really cool. But I'm going to try and let them evaporate for a few days. I wish I had a dehumidifier. Then I could dehumidify them and maybe they would actually dry. I'm also going to try to locate that purple, but I don't have high hopes for finding it. I'm gonna check in with you guys in a few days. It'll feel like no time at all for you and we'll continue our swatch tests. All right, art nerds, we've got the entire tube swatch sheet right here. And from left to right, we have M. Graham, we have St. Petersburg White Knights, we have Core, we have Sennelier, we have uh, Magello Mission Gold, we have Holbein Artist Watercolors, and we have Daniel Smith Watercolors here. And don't worry if you can't really see what you think you should be seeing. Um, I'm going to scan this for you guys and have it available so you can check it out at a high resolution. But in general, the colors all do look pretty bright. Um, again, I'm not a tinting kind of gal. I usually let the white of the paper do the tinting for me. So I'm not one who would normally mix white in with her watercolor. That's just, I literally never work that way. Um, I'd have to like force myself to work that way. I know there's lots of artists who do, so I'm not doubting or casting aspersions on the val validity of the technique. It's just something I don't ever do. So it's not something I'm going to test for necessarily, unless that's something you guys want to see. But to me, it just seems like it's a waste of a lot of paint. Um, 
since we cannot judge these based on the pigments or based on the color names, um, it's not that sort of a comparison. We're really just looking at how bright the colors are, um, how chromatic they seem on the paper. Maybe we're looking at the opacity, but we're really just trying to get an idea of how much color and depth. And um, I would say that the M grams deliver a lot of color. Um, the yellow, red, and blue are very vibrant. The Sap green is not quite as yellow a sap green as I was expecting, but it's still very nice, very serviceable. And the, um, I feel like you could get a nice warmer, well, see, okay. So we've got a warm yellow, we've got a warm blue. That would make a warmer green. So what we really did need was like a viridian or a phthalo green blue shade rather than a sap green necessarily, because we're not going to be able to mix quite the right, we're not going to be able to mix both greens. Um, the burnt sienna, I think, was a nice inclusion. I think between these five colors, we should be able to mix blacks or at least darker colors. I know I was able to do that with the Daniel Smith Essential 6 set, um, but afterwards I did end up buying a really nice burnt sienna and then lunar black, which is a granulating black. I thought I would add some nice texture. The white knights, I did not pre-activate them before they before I swatched them, and they still had a lot of color, had a lot to bring to the table. Not quite as bright, but again, we were working from unactivated half pans. That's pretty impressive. Uh, the core watercolors always bring a lot of color to the table, maybe even too much for some artists. You guys can watch me struggle with using the high chroma set to paint an illustration. The Magello Mission Gold, also bring a lot of color to the table. I really love those watercolors. They are so vibrant, they're so intense, and they're very affordable. The Holbein are not quite as juicy, quite as, you know, in-depth color in depth or colorful I guess as vibrant as some of the other colors I feel but they're not a bad choice the only problem is that compared to the mission gold they can be kind of pricey the Daniel Smith also again bring a lot to the table there's a lot of color there Daniel Smith uses high quality pigments um they do use gum arabic as a binder but even their blues are still very true very true blue blues Ooh, blue blue blues and then the sennelier's these are also honey based i think they're a little more muted than the m grams over here but they're still beautiful very easy to work with watercolors um i was able to mix everything i needed from the five included in the set which was a little bit surprising um if i wanted they do include a cool yellow rather than a warm yellow and then a cool blue so that makes for kind of muddy greens that's kind of my only complaint but that's a test set it's not even marketed as like a mixing set like the essential six so um i think the m grams really deliver a lot of color beautiful color very quick to lay down into a wash like I didn't spend a lot of time mixing them. They were very responsive and that's really nice. And I look forward to seeing how they handle when they've dried out in this half pan form because I have a feeling they're not going to be as nice. It's never as nice um, as the tube. But for somebody like me who has cats and has to pick things up and put things away and can't leave her palette out, um, half pans are really the way for me to go. So I hope that uh, they will perform just as well, right? A girl can dream. So I will see you guys in a few days, like I said earlier, when my half pans have had a chance to dry. So I can't wait to see how they handle then. So my half pans have dried. We're gonna talk about that in a little bit, but I thought it would be really useful, helpful and informative to do a lifting test since I have all these brands swatched here. So I have here a Cotman synthetic, a cup of clean water, and I could really use some paper towels, but I don't know where those are.
So these paints have had multiple days to dry. It's been about half a week. And with the uh, M. Graham, it seemed to sort of reactivate. As you can see, it moves a little bit. The yellow didn't lift. I think the red will. Wow, blue really did. I have a feeling though, the green is gonna be a little more staining. Though it lifted a little bit better than the yellow did. That was the M. Graham. Next, we're testing the White Knights. And if you guys would ever like to see a head-to-head -head comparison video, either between two different brands or the tube versus the half pan or the student grade version of their professional color, you guys can always shoot me an email or let me know in the comments. And if I can oblige, I will. So this is the White Knights. These were the only half pan watercolors I did in this version of the review. In the next step where we're doing half pans, it's gonna be all half pans. And most of them are going to be half pans from tube watercolors. Years ago, at a hands-on creativity in Plaza, the Windsor & Newton rep was talking about how even though, yes, you can physically form uh, fill half pans with two watercolors, you really should use half pans that are specifically formulated for that, and Windsor & Newton is specifically formulated for that. So that was White Knights. Next is Core. So that's why I always kind of make it a point to test them separately as I'm really curious how much validity there is to that. And honestly, I haven't really found too many brands that don't work decently well. No, they're not formulated for half pan use necessarily, but loads of watercolor artists far more professional, serious, and lauded than I am will work from reconstituted tube paint, uh, paints. Something that I'd like to do at some point though is Windsor & Newton tube versus Windsor & Newton half pan. Okay, that's a Quinn color. It's not surprising to me that that doesn't lift because, or isn't really lifting. Quinacridones tend not to be granulating and colors that are non-granulating are more likely to be staining colors. And since this video is probably getting a little long for some of you, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to break it into two halves. We're going to do the rest of the testing, the half pan testing in another video. Woo, that lifted fast. Some of these core watercolors colors are lifting very easily. Next is Magello Mission Gold. I do think though I'll end this video and maybe start the next video with the half pan swatches for the M grams since we kind of started the video with that. So this is Mission Gold. Next is Holbein. Next is Daniel Smith. And then finally, Sennelier. We'll go the opposite direction since we don't have room off the side of the page. I'm gonna lift it a little bit more than some of these other ones have. So like we talked about earlier, this test isn't really um, 
all of the same color or color name or pigments versus, you know, their matches in other companies. It was really just sort of a vibrancy test since M. Graham claims to make some of the most vibrant watercolors. So obviously not every brand is one-to-one -one or even close. I did the best I could, but sometimes they're very obviously different. So we have M. Graham, White Knights, Core, Magello, Holbein, Daniel Smith, and Sennelier. All right, guys, I promised I would end our review with the swatches for the half pans that have been allowed to dry. They've been allowed to dry for several days. Here we have our original swatch sheet from the beginning of the video. This is on Blick Premier watercolor paper. It's a 100% cotton rag watercolor paper that I think is somewhat comparable to Arches, so I thought it'd be really nice for our swatches. I'm basically just testing to see if there's really any change in how the paint behaves. M. Graham talks about how even after the paints have been allowed to dry or if they've been left open, they've been left out, they still reconstitute quickly, which is one of the reasons I didn't pre-soak these, but also they were already so soft, I thought they would turn to soup. And they do seem to reactivate very quickly. Some of us may find this a little bit of an easier way to handle our watercolors. It's certainly a little more compact. Now I have to try and recreate the order. And these are from the basic set, plus some from my own collection. Now, here's Terra Rosa, which looked like it was gonna be a little difficult to begin with. Actually, I was able to remove a lot of the separation, so now we're actually getting a nice clean look at the color, which is a really beautiful red-brown, almost like a Venetian red. Colors are still very beautiful, very vibrant. Oh, not quite in order because I didn't do the white first. The white will be interesting to see how it reconstitutes. I noticed it in the gouache, so the paints with sort of optical brighteners in them dried harder and not as gummy. Oh, but it actually reconstitutes decently well. That's impressive because I've had a lot of trouble with white watercolors having zero coverage, so I usually don't bother with them. I usually just use white gouache. And finally, we have the yellow ochre gouache. And it seems like I might be able to get away with using it just as a yellow ochre watercolor. And yellow ochre as a watercolor is always even a little bit opaque. It's not really something that's super concerning for me. So I'm gonna, ooh, they have a little bit of a funky, or is that the paper? I've heard people say that arches tends to smell like cat pee when it's wet. This has a little bit of an odor as well. So I'm gonna let these dry and check back in with you guys. All right, so these have had a chance to dry. We swatched Azo Yellow, Permanent Alizarin Crimson, Ultramarine Blue, Sap Green, Burnt Sienna, Terra Rosa, Burnt Umber, Titanium White Opaque, and Raw Sienna, but this is gouache. And I think the colors are still very vibrant. 
they're still um, full of life and vivacity. I actually had better luck with Terra Rosa in a half pan than I've had from the tube. So I think they actually re reconstitute quite nicely from a half pan like this. And if you have one of those Magello airtight palettes, that might be ideal for you if you want the benefits of both. So thank you guys so much for watching this M. Graham Unbox and Swatch. I hope it was useful, helpful, and informative for you guys. And if you're interested in the, seeing these watercolor swatches color corrected and up close, keep an eye probably on my blog. Um, I'm looking for a nice archival internet way of hosting these large format scans so that you guys can see them. And uh, they take a lot of time. They take a lot of resources to do. So I may opt to keep them as a patron perk. So uh, you can keep an eye out on the blog. You can keep an eye out on this channel. I'm sure I'll do an announcement for that, but I do plan on putting them online somewhere. So if you are looking for more watercolor tips, tricks, and tutorials, this channel is full of unbox and swatch unboxings. I've been doing a lot of nicer watercolors because I'm trying to decide whether or not I want to move away from Winsor Newton for my webcomic pages. It is a watercolor webcomic. Or if I want to stick to Windsor Newton or what I'm kind of reformulating how I buy and how I think about my watercolors trying to up my game so I'm sharing that experience with you guys in hopes that it'll help some of the illustrators and comic artists out there also make good purchasing decisions when it comes to their watercolor supplies so we're going to figure this out together and I share a lot of that journey over at natosoup.blogspot.com which is my art supply review blog in my watercolor basic series so I highly recommend you check that out as well and if you would be so kind please head on over to 7inchcara.com or 7inchcara.tumblr.com. That is my watercolor webcomic, 7 Inch Kara. It follows the adventures of a Lilliputian girl, meeting humans for the first time, having big adventures, eating people food, and playing with cats. So if that sounds good to you, please do check it out. I look forward to seeing you guys again really soon with the rest of the half pan comparison. And I look forward to seeing you guys with the field test. These colors are so beautiful. I am sure they will perform really well. So I hope you guys have a nice day. See you again really soon. Bye, guys.